You're listening to The Sensuality Project Podcast, where the messiness of real life gets sexy, hosted by Stacey Herrera. This podcast is intended for mature audiences only. Episodes contain profane language and topics of a sexual nature that may not be suitable for children. Listener discretion is strongly advised. We're back for another episode of the Sensuality Project Podcast, and I'm your host, Stacey Herrera. (laughs) Don't I sound all professional and shit? Anyways, thank you for joining me again. I'm super excited about today's episode. I'm chatting with my sister friend, Caitlin Grace, and the reason that this conversation is so timely, because just as I'm recording this, I wrote a newsletter this morning and I was talking about my challenges with allowing myself to be loved. Like I'm really great at loving, but I am still learning to be loved and to allow people to love me. So this conversation with Caitlin, though, we explore the dynamics of love long term. She's been married to an amazing man in an amazing relationship and for decades, for decades. And they model what it looks like to love someone for a really long time, want, even after becoming empty nesters, still enjoying one another's company and still having amazing sex which almost seems counterculture, right? Because we live in here in the Western world. We often see long-term relationships that become complacent, where people often just tolerate one another, but they're not still feeling passionate. They're not feeling in love, per se, with, with their partner. They just get used to one another. But that is not the experience that Caitlin and her husband are having. And I think that it's just marvelous. I love that. And Caitlin does women's work. She does a lot of work with with the womb and energy, and she does yoni egg coaching. She's just fucking awesome. I love her. And I also love that this relationship is, this is sisterhood, right? So like when I met Caitlin, we, our work was very similar and there's never been any competition between us. There's never been anything but love and support. We've supported one another in our ventures. It's just been amazing. And it also is an ode, our our friendship is an ode to the internet because I'm here in the United States in California and Caitlin lives in New Zealand and we are oceans apart and have never been in the same room at the same time. And we're friends. Like, I love her. She loves me. It's amazing and it's beautiful. And that's what sistership looks like. So you're going to really get a lot out of this conversation if you are in a long-term relationship or aspire to be in one. Um, If you are a woman navigating the crazy, sexy, cool, delicious, expansive messiness of being a woman, this co- this episode and this conversation is going to resonate with you deeply. So I'm going to be quiet now. Listen up. Thank you for joining me. Oh, and before I go, as always, the show notes for this episode can be found on my website, um, stacyherrera.com under podcast episode. So thanks. Okay, so let's have some foreplay then, since we haven't talked in a while. <laughs> foreplay. Okay, so based on how you feel today, yeah, in this moment, would you prefer sweet love making or a raunchy roll in the hay? See, I don't see that there's a choice between one or the other. I think they're both delicious and I want them both oh look at you you can have it all you can have all of the things I will have all of the things I will take all of that twice thank you very much look I'm with you okay (laughs) because you can have it you can have it both ways yeah absolutely okay how would you how would you rate your sexual prowess on a scale of one to ten with with one being minimal and ten being off the charts Oh, I'd have to say a 10 on a good day. Mm-hmm. Sundays, you know, probably more like a five. But, uh, yeah, on the, I'd have to say up around the 10. Um, when my husband and I are in the zone, mm-hmm. it's, just, it's truly 
transcendent is the best word to describe it. I know that sounds very woo-woo, but it just... No, I get it. I do. We go to a completely different other place. It's kind of like we meld into one. And it's not that we're having that all the time, but when it happens, it blows my mind every time. Blows my heart wide open. Yeah. I'm so in love with your husband. (laughs) I know. I am. I make all my girlfriends jealous because he is fucking awesome. He just is the most amazing man. Hasn't always been that way. We've been together 25 years this month, and it's taken a long time to get to this point. But uh, now that we're here, it's a really, really good place to be, a really good place. Look, we are all inspired (laughs) inspired to hang in there yeah absolutely you know it's got to be the right person Mm -hmm. and they've got to be willing to grow that's what I have loved with about my husband is uh he has been willing to grow and do the work and he sees me growing and doing the work and he goes oh okay, that's how it's done. And he's kind of, you know, following on. One of his nicknames for me is Two Steps because I'm always two steps ahead of him. <laughs> that's cute. Yeah. So it's, it, he has really done the work. He has really found his demons and, and worked on those as well. And it's just beautiful to see. I am, yeah. I, I think that it really is important. And I think it's one of the pieces that, nobody really tells you, especially if you're on the path yourself, you know, it can often feel like when you connect with another person, you know, male or female, whatever your choice is, it can often feel like you are too much because you do the work. But the truth is, is we have to find somebody who is compatible and who can actually be with someone who does the work and be willing to be the kind of person that wants to be a better person and yeah. every person isn't and and that's okay yep. you know it's okay but every person can't be with somebody that is doing the work that's right and you know and it has been I mean we've had our battles we've had absolutely had our battles but to see him step up and and fully embrace who, who he is and what his where his um, dramas have been and what's been holding him back and seeing him go, oh, okay, yeah, I get that. I see I see what you're saying and go, oh, yeah, I need to do that work. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to, to watch him to grow. I mean, he was already a really beautiful man to start off with, mm-hmm. um, but he's even more so now, yeah, much more. I love that. Okay, last foreplay question. Okay, I'm going to describe, I'm going to give you three statements that describe something and you try to pick what the something is. Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I go to bed with you. All I ever get is head and pounding can make me soft. What am I? Pounding can make me soft. What am I? Ooh. That's a good question. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, my pillow. Yes, look at you. Look at you. No, you, you know what? You're the first person that got it. That I mean, I don't always give the same one, but you're the yep. first person that I've chatted with so far that was able to pick the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, me. Look, of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Oh, that's that's, that, uh, look, that that tickles me because that's never happened. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just about ready to give up, and it's like, no, that must be your pillow. That must be intuition. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Look, look can we speak to <laughs> the power of women's intuition and how often we discount that? Oh, okay. So I am in uh, a group of amazing clairvoyant, medium, intuitive woman. Uh, And I keep on, I had been playing small. I'd just been zipping my lip when the inspiration or the intuition hit came and thinking, oh, no, I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, no, they're they're so much more in tune than I am. They're so, you know, I put them up here and Mm -hmm. I put myself down there, you know. And, um, and And then I noticed that 
they would say, oh, it's, it's so-and-so. And I'd go, I had that in my head like 10 minutes ago. Okay. And then the, it kept on happening that the answers that they were giving people um, and everybody was going, oh, yeah, that's amazing. That's, that's right on. And I was going, well, I had that in my head like 10 minutes ago. So I started actually opening my mouth and going, this is, this is what's happening and, and trusting my own intuition and that everybody was like, oh, wow, yeah, that's amazing. So it's, it's actually stopping playing small because we all get the, the intuitive hits all the time and we just discount it as not important. Oh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, that wouldn't happen to me. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't get the, the intuitive hit. But the more tuned in that we are, the more in our bodies that we are, the more that intuition is just right, right fucking there at the surface. And we've got it. And we just have to open our mouths and speak it or take action on it and things just start to flow. It's honestly, I believe that connecting in with our wombs, because that's kind of the center of our yes. intuition, is yes. Everything. If you're not in touch with your womb, if you have discounted your womb or your womb space for those who actually have had hysterectomies, which is horrifyingly high. Uh, Yes, my hand is right up there. (laughs) Oh, no. See, that just, that is kind of my mission. My new hashtag name is Womb Warrior Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm on a mission to help women save their wombs and actually value it as the the powerhouse of intuition and creativity and manifesting that it actually is. And also helping those women understand that have had a hysterectomy that actually they still they still have that womb space. They still have that power center. It doesn't go away because the physical piece has been removed. It's Absolutely. still there. And we you, just have to tap into that. You know, it's so interesting because um, that's one story that I've never shared publicly and because I know that I have to do something with it when I do. Um, You know, like I know if I had known what I know now, I would not have said yes to that. Um, But even in even in its absence, it 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 gifted me with so much. Yeah, because I I had a partial hysterectomy with a continued period. Yeah, you know. So, um, and I've never heard of that before. Well, let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that it was temporary myself when it okay. happened. When it happened, the first you know first couple of months, my doctor called it a reminder period. Yep, and eight years. <laughs> That's a long reminder. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah, I, I, it's, it's a story that I've been saving because I know that I need to move on it. But if I hadn't still had my period, you know, like I've done so much work with women around using their cycle to, you know, choose things in their life and like when to communicate and how to implement and when to pull back and all these different things. And I don't know if I would have been able to really feel the teaching because I would not have have ever lived it you know because before I mean I didn't track I didn't track my period I knew when it was coming and when it was going like (laughs) you know I didn't know like I wasn't in tune with the rhythm of my body in that way so there would have been no way that I would have been able to speak to that without having lived the experience so I really feel like that's the reason that my period hung around Yeah. yeah was because I needed to learn from it yeah, and I see, uh, you know, like I'm the other side of uh, of that because I'm the I'm menopausal. Mm-hmm. So my periods, I have no idea when they're ever going to show up, or if they are. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I've kind of gone so long now. I think that I'm hoping that that's kind of it. Yeah, you might be official but, now. Huh? <laughs> well, I'm kind of halfway to official. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like I I want to track my my energy, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. it's more my energy now but I still don't know how to do that. So I'm quite fascinated. I kind of feel like I missed the bus because my periods stopped <laughs> and I didn't quite get on, on the tracking train before mm-hmm. that happened. Um, but yeah, I'd still love to actually figure out 
how that works? Yeah, it might be just a matter of like really paying attention to to scent and texture of your discharge because it'll tell you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because even women that um, once they're like postmenopausal, there's still a, a dip, you know, it's, it's more subtle, you know, it's more yeah. subtle, um, not as obvious, but um, that might be just, you know, paying attention to when it's kind of more slick, you know, or when it's more milky. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and that's, um, that's tricky in itself because, right? I, because I use a Yoni egg. Mm-hmm. So that, uh, that increases lubrication mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, it's not, it's not as apparent. Mm-hmm. I go by my mood. Mm-hmm. I actually track my mood more and I find times when I'm actually, um, more weepy or a bit more sensitive and it's kind of like, because I'm still marking on the day on on my calendar mm-hmm. how many days it's been since I last had a period, which my last one was April. Um, so I'm still tracking those. So I'm kind of keeping some record mm-hmm. of emotions, but I need to actually write it down. I haven't been writing it down. Look, I I haven't been good about writing anything down for the last three months. <laughs> Nothing like my planner looks like I haven't done shit for three months. <laughs> and I bet that's not true. I it isn't. Imagine. It isn't, but <laughs> there's no evidence. <laughs> you could have just been on a big long holiday. Recaping. That w- that would have yeah. been lovely. It it's yeah. it's felt like you know, it's so interesting because I knew that going into this year, I knew that I was changing and I knew that this was going to be a really transformative year. And I knew that I knew that I was going to be different and going into like right before I went to this silent retreat in July, I was like the woman that I was, she has nothing left to say. And it was such a fitting departure from her. And I feel so much more of myself. I'm really grateful to her because she was so good about handling tough shit. Yeah. Um, and, but she built these enormous walls, <laughs> yeah. that, you know, that call that I had to scale and that I expected other people to scale to get yeah. to me. And so she was a great pr- protector. You know, she was yeah. such a great um, warrior in that way for, what she thought was protecting my heart. And now she is no longer. And um, it's fucking scary. Just this morning, I was having a conversation and um, feeling like someone's being, being so kind to me (laughs) and so loving to me and me having full awareness that I am so much better at loving than being loved. So I'm working on being loved and it's an interesting thing. It's a really Isn't it? interesting thing. Uh, you know, we are so, we are so, we bought the fucking Kool-Aid that we are supposed to give and give and give and give. That women are just natural born givers. And it's all bullshit. Yes. We physically designed to, to receive. receive. So how the hell did we get that story so flipped in our head that we were born to give? But we bought into it, and then when we have to open into receiving, we kind of push that away and go, no, that's not for me. No, I'm not supposed to do that. No, I'm I'm the one that's supposed to give. But when we can open and soften into that place of receiving, it is a beautiful and delicious experience. It's just so feeds us so much, and we need that feeding and nurturing, and it's you know, it, we have bought into and are living such masculinized lives mm. as women and we don't even realize it. It's it's really sad uh, because if you tell the average woman that she's living a masculine life, she will deny it till she's born. Oh, no, because she wears lipstick and high heels and she wears lingerie. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah, all she, the all the femininity things we yeah. mistake for feminine. It is yeah. not the same thing. It is not the same thing. It is not the same thing. You have to soften and open and just that. If you just if that became your mantra on a daily basis, yeah. soften, open, soften, open. What a different life you'd live. Oh, it's honestly. so 
and it's it it's intentional like it's being intentional and being able to be in the discomfort like because literally your nervous system has to expand to accommodate receiving yeah. you yeah. know because your nervous system is responding to these emotional experiences and yeah. you feel that like you literally feel the fight or flight flips switch flip on because yeah. you want to run so fucking fast away from whatever that thing is that's making you contract. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, I can't tell you how often, and I'm not a runner because I'm too big for that shit. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me too. Me you know, too. too big for that shit. But my track shoes laced yeah. up and ready for me to run the fuck away whenever I get uncomfortable. And yeah. it is it is a constant practice to keep my feet out of the fucking shoes. (laughs) Well, see, the other thing with women is we are, we are the container. Mm -hmm. We are the stillness. Mm -hmm. And yet we've got, you know, on this fucking treadmill of running, 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 busy, 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 have to do, have to do, have to do. Give, 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 oh, you want some of that? Here you go, here you go. You know, doing all the stuff in the head, in the head, in the head. And if we can just drop into stillness and just stay in that stillness and that that quiet space, that's what we need. We need long amounts of quiet space and stillness to restore ourselves. Um, and I don't know any woman that gets that. I just don't apart from me because I'm so lucky, but <laughs> anybody that gets that, you know, that's just- I, you know, I'm, I'm good at the stillness. Um, I, I don't know that that's always been true. I'm good now. <laughs> I'm good right now. But I think like when I, in the, in the women that I talk to and encounter, even just in regular, you know, every day you run into them at the market or whatever. The, yeah. the thing is, is that in the moment when you're talking with them, you see their eyes have recognition. Yep. But then it gets discarded as frivolous. Yep. So easily. Like yep. to to convince a woman that it's important to connect with her womb or to convince a woman that it's important to just have a relationship with her body, an intimate relationship with her body in general. Like yep. and and to get her to understand that in creating intimacy with herself she will expand her capacity to attract and to hold space and to connect and be intimate with others. But getting yep. a woman to, to, to take that seriously yep. is, is like, I don't know if I've ever done anything harder than that. <laughs> I know. And it's, you know, so part of my story is that I, I bled really heavy for many, many years. And the doctors kept on saying to me, we'll just take your uterus out. If you're past having children, we'll just take it out. And it's like, is it cancerous? Do I have any tumours? Do I have any fibroids? And the answer was no, no, no. Everything's fine. But it'll just be easier for you. It'll just be easier for you to just take that away. And it's like, no, there must be some, right, I need to do, get to work on the emotional issues. Where am I leaking my power? Yes. Where am I, you know, where am I actually giving away all my power? Oh, Where am I giving away all my creativity? Oh, okay. Now I start bringing that back. Periods got lighter. Mm -hmm. My periods got lighter. Changed my diet. Mm -hmm. Took out wheat, took out sugar for a while. Uh, Periods got lighter. Changed my tampons, the brand of tampons. Periods got lighter. Oh, okay. So there is things that I can do that the doctors don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. The only solution is... Try snips. this, try this, take it out. We'll snips. just take it out. Look, snips and pills, that's the formula. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, well, I'm sorry, but that's that's disempowering for women mm-hmm. to just offer them that as a solution because it's not a long-term solution because all those other organs then have to shift and yes. move, fill up the space where the uterus was, and then you open yourselves to prolapses of other things, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. bladder pro- prolapse, bowel prolapse. That's not fun. No, Nobody tells not. you that. Well, Nobody tells you that that's the side effects. Well, and you know, when when I was, I had fibroids. And again, like I wasn't aware at the time of like my mother wound that had created that. Yeah. Um, 
which because it was it was it was hereditary, but not in the same way that they explain hereditary. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. the wound had been traveling um, through my lineage for quite some time. And when they were I, I was done having kids. I, yeah. I knew I didn't want any more. So I said, OK, um, she when they asked me, did I want to keep my cervix? I said, yes, they're delicious nerves there. And I knew that there was a support system for my bladder and all my other things. So I was like, you have to. But of course, there's no magic line where the uterus starts in this, where the cervix begins and the uterus ends. Yeah. So initially, you know, it was like, oh, well, you know, this reminder period. And when I tell you, not only did I have a period every month, it was still coming 10 to 14 fucking days because yep. the emotional work had not been done. Yep. Yep. And once I really connected with myself, the lightest periods I'd ever had in terms of length, because they were not heavy because half my most of my uterus was gone, but lightest experience I had ever had. But because yeah. I had still had cramps, I still had all of the all of the things. The only thing that wasn't there was it wasn't enough tissue to let me bleed like I had been bleeding. Yeah. Yeah. But w- once I did the work, like yeah. I couldn't believe like and, and then it became enjoyable actually to get my period. Yeah. Enjoyable. And in the last three months, I've had all this shift and my period has been absent. And nope. I said, you, you know, because I had a whole, but in the last three months, I have released more stories than I did in the last decade. So, yeah. of course, so the first month I was like, hmm, is there something I'm holding? You know, is this, is, you know, then the second month I was like, wait a minute. Then the third month I was, then I was like, oh, I don't know uh-huh. if I'm ready. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I'm ready to say goodbye to it, but the it's it's very like it's not that I can still know that I'm on it it's a very very pale tint and the smell is different so I still know it but it was it's been strange to not see it yeah because I've had it for so long that's the other thing is um that we're not told or uh talk about is the kind of grieving that goes on yes. when your period, you know, we curse it every month. We call it the curse. But when it stops and doesn't happen and you, it's not because you're pregnant, it's because you're out the other side mm-hmm. and you're now moving into menopause, it's, oh, I'm, I'm not a bleeding woman anymore. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm not feminine anymore? Yes. I'm not a woman anymore. Um, and the same thing when women have hysterectomies they think oh this is going to be great and then they have it and then it's they're like shocked oh I don't have a womb and as you and I know womb is right in our name we're womb in yes so then they they go through that grieving process nobody talks about oh it's a thing it's a thing and and I've officially started having hot flashes by the way Caitlin oh (laughs) (laughs) you know I had had a couple and then not long ago, I was sitting on the sofa and in my living room, it never gets warm. Like there's no direct sunlight and it stays really a nice temperature year round, no matter yeah. how hot it gets outside. And I'm sitting on the sofa and I'm like, oh my goodness, it's so warm and stuffy in here. I said to my daughter, we need to open up the door. And so yeah. she did. And then like 20 minutes later, I was like, why does it keep getting hot? And I said, are you hot? And she said, no. And then it was like a, a light bulb. I said, oh, I was like, this is a hot flash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky. My hot flash, my hot flashes are like a flush. I just get hot for about a minute mm-hmm. and then cold. Mm-hmm. You know, then I go back to my normal temperatures. I get hot long enough to go, oh, bloody hell. It's got really hot. Oh no, okay, we're back we're back to normal. Normal mm-hmm. transmission has resumed. Or if I'm in bed, I fling the sheets off. Mm-hmm. Oh, fling them back on again. It's mm-hmm. it's literally like about a minute. It's not 20 minutes, it's mm-hmm. like a minute or two at the most. So those have been really good. It's it's not a big it's not a big drama. Um I haven't had more than five minutes. Um, but I think the mindset yeah. helps. You know what I mean? Because the minute you start resisting them and cursing them, they do get longer. Because I've seen women that, you know, 10, 15 minutes and they're still like sweating and now they're like ready to fill a bucket. But part of it is the resistance and the attitude that you have toward it. I mean, 
it felt, I was just like, oh my goodness. So yeah. I haven't been mad about it. I just was no. like, you know, I'm of a certain age now yeah. and I'm honoring that. And so I love, I, I don't like to wear clothes and shoes anyway, but when I feel <laughs> one, the first thing I do is take my shoes off because I know yeah. that if my, if my feet feel a different temperature, it shifts you know, yeah. and if that's not available, I will, if I have something cold, I will put it up against my wrist. Like, yeah. you know, it's just like, okay, I just need to release it. Um, yeah. But the the women that I've seen have the longest, you know, hot flashes also are so fucking mad and feel so disgruntled about the inconvenience of it. Yeah. That they yeah. almost keep it in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because I've heard women that uh, are still having hot flashes like in their 80s. And it's yeah, like, my, my my grandmother, she not often, crazy. but she said to me recently, she said, you know, I'm 83. I thought that I would be done by now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I just generally feel, uh, I don't feel the, the cold as much as in general. I just mm-hmm. don't feel the cold as much. I'd feel like my temperature's kind of gone up a little bit. Yeah, look, because um, you're, you're smoking hot, of course. <laughs> of course of course <laughs> so sweet yeah it's um what's the most pressing issue that you've seen in like um the the, the issue that seems to present the most often with with women you know or women you work with or like em- was is it emotional stuff is it physical stuff all of that and it's what's amazing me and ab- like absolutely my mouth drops open is how little we talk about sexuality and our genitals and what's actually going on. Yes. It's, you know, and how my favorite topics of discussion do tell. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So, um, so I just did a live stream on everything you want to know about Yoni eggs and it it got a lot of people talking. Um, but the people that were talking were kind of like, how did I not know that before? How I'd never heard of that before. You want me to put an egg where they just they were shocked about this whole thing. And it, it's like everyday conversation for me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and for my girlfriends, because they are my girlfriends for that reason, because I share all this stuff with them. And then I started hearing stories. So I have one uh, client who, uh, cannot use an ordinary size yoni egg her vagina is incredibly small Mm -hmm. she has um she has tearing and bleeding and with sex and has done since she was in her 20s and she is she becoming is she is she being or is she becoming aroused like fully aroused i haven't got to the into that detail with her but she said, I always thought that I enjoyed sex until I hit menopause and then I realised that I, I actually don't. And it's like, well, if you're in that much pain and you're bleeding all the time because your skin is tearing, why the hell would you enjoy it? Right. And it's like, how did she not know that that was uncomfortable? How did no, she not Nobody know? ever talked about it. Nobody ever talks about it. She'd talk to, um, she'd have sort of conversations with a gynecologist because, you know, putting the, the speculum in. She said, oh, well, I know that everybody finds it uncomfortable with the speculum. So even her gynecologist didn't have a clue. Mm-hmm. And it's like, how do we get to that point that thinking that your skin tearing and bleeding is normal in a sexual experience? How do we think that and get to 45 and still not know that that's not okay? It's it's bizarre. Well, and I think we have to we we have to start having really direct conversations with our children. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like my, my daughter, I, that's the one thing. If I don't know if I've done anything else right, <laughs> but but it, sexuality with my child, I did yeah. really really well. Accidentally awesome. though, accidentally. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. because I was so advanced. I wasn't. I just knew that I didn't want to raise my daughter to be the kind of woman that didn't enjoy sex. Yeah. And so I never made it gross. It's so yeah. interesting because I was just um, having a conversation with a woman and, and she's talking about her grandson and she's like, he's 12 and he masturbates. And I said, I, was, I started masturbating when I was seven. 
That's yeah. normal. He's supposed to. Like, yeah. you know, but we have to normalize the conversation yeah. younger. I mean, of course, there's all these, you know, there's billions of people that are adults now. So we they need to be educated too, because if they don't, then the next, it just keeps going, which is exactly how we got here. Yeah, and the other thing is, you know, let's give our genitals the correct frickin' name. Let's stop telling our girls that that's their vagina. It's fucking not. That's their vulva. There's all these intricate bits. Let's all start giving them the names for all the different pieces of their genitals. A boy knows his Mm -hmm. penis, scrotum, testicles. You know, they know that. But we don't. We have no idea. It's only once I started doing this work with the womb that I actually even knew where my womb was located. Wow. How to find it. I kind of had a general idea. Oh, it's there, you know, you point to your belly. But that's, you know, that's Mm -hmm. not Mm -hmm. where it is. Uh, And I don't think most people know, and I don't think women actually even realise how, what size their uterus is. Mm -hmm. They know when they're pregnant, but they don't know you know, there's so much that we just kind of vaguely understand. We don't have a real grasp of. We need to start having the conversations. We need to talk about this stuff more and more and more and get it out in the open. Yeah, I was such a nerd. Like, I remember my first urinary tract infection was in seventh grade. And it was not just, it wasn't like really burning with pee. It was discomfort. And when my mother asked me where, what was hurting? And I said, my uterus was hurting. Yeah. And yeah. so she took me to the gynecologist because she knew that that's what, where they do, who, that's who takes care of that. But yeah. like now that I'm older, I'm very surprised because that was my exact language in seventh grade. You know, this is yeah. me at 12. She's like, what's hurting? My uterus is hurting because I was, I was very aware that that was the only thing that was right there. I knew it wasn't yeah. like my colon, but I, but now that I'm this age, in seventh grade, I have no fucking idea why I knew. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Because I hadn't taken biology yet. Like, yeah. I re- I have no idea why I knew. Yeah, that's crazy. But that's brilliant. I mean, it's it, that's the thing. We have to actually take ownership of our body. This mm-hmm. is the big thing is you can't hand it over to the doctors and go, you fix me because all this they'll do is, you know, like yep. you said, dips yep. and pills. That's all yep. they know. That's all they know. So you, we have to tune into our own body and, and our own wisdom as to what's going on for us. What is that pain and what's it really trying to tell me mm-hmm. rather than just going, Oh, well, I'll just take some Panadol or some Nurofen and that'll go away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you didn't get the message. What was your body trying to actually tell you? Mm -hmm. Was it slow down? Was it, you know, don't lift that? Was it, you know, just rest? What was Mm -hmm. the pain trying to tell you? Um, You've lost that. That's what, you know, the body's a blunt instrument. It's only got these ways of communicating with us through pain or, you know, some signal that it's trying to get to us. Mm -hmm. And it's so literal. It's so funny. Um, not too long ago, I was having coffee with somebody and the whole time I kept crossing my arms across my chest. And then yeah. I started having this dialogue in my mind, like, Stacy, it's okay to keep your heart open. Yeah. You know, not realizing that that was my ego trying to coerce me into do into connecting with somebody that I shouldn't be connecting with, yeah. you know, because I kept doing it. And it wasn't until weeks later when the person started acting um, unpleasant. <laughs> yeah. That I was like, oh, my body was trying to tell me it's not safe to let this person in your heart space, yeah. you know, but, but my ego was like, you just need to relax and keep your heart open. And so yeah. I kept uncrossing my arms, but for like 30 minutes in like instinctively, I kept doing it. And then yeah. I kept like fighting against that. So like even just being able to pay attention because your body knows everything before you do. Oh, but, hell yeah. You know, but being able to pay attention to the language that your body is actually communicating, because it's always telling you, and unlike your mind, your body does not, cannot, will not lie to you. No. Your mind, no. though, no. Yep. all day long, it will say anything, that <laughs> it, anything to get you to do whatever it wants you to do, whatever to feel safe. It will fucking fuck you, literally. Yeah. You know, but not the body can't do it. 
No, it can't. Like no. you sense it. It's it's amazing. Like it's I'm never I, I'm I'm amazed at my body every single day. There's always something that I'm like, oh my god, I can't yeah. believe that. Yeah, I know, I know. But it's uh, the body is like you said, looking out for us all the time, all the time, and giving us so many messages and so many signals that we just sedate or push away. Yes. Or Yes. Um, and then we wonder, and then we go, well, why do I feel like shit now? Mm-hmm. It's like, well, um, have you been paying attention? You know, mm-hmm. I've been giving you all the messages. So, yeah. We learn so early, though. Well, not only do we learn it, we learn it by watching the people around us. But even yeah. more than that, those same people encourage us to disconnect from our bodies. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean... I can't, if I had a nickel for every time somebody told me that I didn't feel how I felt, like, no, you yeah. don't. What do you mean? No, I don't. <laughs> I, yeah. you know, I feel this. No, you don't. What? Yes, yeah. I do. Yes, I do. Like yeah. that starts so early. Yeah. I know. So early and it never stops. No, no. Or if you are, you know, if you are feeling your feelings, are you being too sensitive? Oh, Yes. Yeah, fuck, or, I, that is one of the the worst things I think is you're being too sensitive, and it's like, well, actually, how can you be too sensitive? Right. There is no too sensitive. It's just I'm feeling my feelings. Yeah, if you can't cope with it, that's your shit. Absolutely. I'm sorry, but that's your shit. You know. Absolutely. Okay, let's have a little intercourse now. <laughs> 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 okay, which best describes you? Screamer, moaner, or cat got your tongue? Uh, definitely a moaner, definitely a moaner, have, have periods of screaming and periods of, you know, saying nothing at all. Yeah. But mostly, mostly I'm a moaner. Yeah. I, I think I'm mostly, I, I, I'm, I never fucking stop talking even during sex. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, um, finding my voice. Mm-hmm was a process, mm-hmm. uh, especially now, you know, now that the kids have all gone and we've got the house to ourselves. Oh yeah. The, the rafters shake sometimes. Yeah, the, the symphony of uh, the cacophony of sounds. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, and it just is so liberating to actually be able to make those noises. And then when I have visitors come back to the house you know the one thing because we built this house the one thing that I'm kicking myself for is that we didn't put soundproof bats in mm. you know, that we didn't put soundproofing in all the rooms because that would have just made things so much easier um for me when, when people come to stay because yeah. it's, it's hard going from being that uh open and loud to being <laughs> <laughs> Grandkids stay. I can't scream in the middle of the night now. Right. <laughs> you don't want to frighten the children. Well, that's a great segue into my next question. What's the most sexually liberating thing you've ever done? Oh, what is the most sexually liberating thing I've ever done? It would have to be when I started squirting. Mm. And that gets easier, apparently, as you get older. Mm-hmm. That's what I hear. Uh, yeah. And it was one the first time, and I still don't do it all the time, but the, when I actually can let go, can be totally in that moment and just open the floodgates, and mm-hmm. it is floodgates. Mm-hmm. It's not just, you know, not just little bits. That was like, oh, wow. That just feels you know, we were talking about opening and softening. Mm -hmm. That is the most open and soft you can possibly be. It's just, your whole body feels like it's melting. It's just delicious. Um, So yeah, that. Look, you're so intuitive because you keep segueing right into into my next question. So (laughs) excellent. So the the last question is, um, describe the sensation of your orgasm in three words. In three words. Oh, that's hard because I'm a wordy girl. Three words. That's me too. Like three is never enough. No. Orgasms or words. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Uh, would be opening and softening, I think. Would just be opening uh, and shaking. Mm, the shaking, mm-hmm. you know. That used to really embarrass me. Have you read me? Sex at Dawn? 
I have. I lo- that's. I think everybody should read that book. Yeah. I think that it's so, I love that it talked about like the origins of the relationship types and yep. why, why people believe that they're monogamous. Yeah. Um, I think everybody should read it. And the other book that everybody should read is the Mag- Magdalene Manuscript. Have you read oh, that? One? Yep. I'm not finished with that one, but I'm, but I started reading it a couple of months ago. No, I haven't finished with that one either, but the, she actually talks about the shuddering in there mm-hmm. and it was like, Oh, you know, we need to talk more about that, yeah. you know, because that used to em- em- embarrass me. Me too. The first time it happened, I thought I was like, oh my God, he's going to think I'm fucking retarded. Look, I yeah. know retarded is not politically correct. So I, I don't mean, <laughs> I don't mean, look, look, now you have to be careful. I didn't mean that offensively, but, no, we, yeah. Yeah. but that was my thought initially. Like, oh my God, why, why won't my body stop doing this thing? Because yeah. it had never yeah. happened to me before. And I did not know what the hell was going on. No, and you don't see them do it in the movies. No. There is no shuddering, you know, and, you know, at least not even talk about movie sex because that's just so ridiculous. But On the, so many levels. On so many levels. But it's that shuddering and that shaking and it was like, oh. And I used to try and um, not, you know, mm-hmm. I would just try and. <laughs> Look, good luck, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, like, or stop myself from getting from orgasming so that I didn't do that so that I didn't have to get embarrassed. And I mean, how fucking sick is that? Mm -hmm. That we actually deny ourselves the pleasure because we think we're going to look silly. Mm -hmm. By the time you get to my age, you kind of put all that shit to one side and just go, I'm going for it. (laughs) Right. You know, and it's so much more fun. It, you know, this idea that I would like to bust the myth that, um, that sex gets, you know, disappears when you get older no. or, you know, it's like, no, it actually gets better. You might not be having it three or four times a week. You might not be having it as re- regularly as you used to, but it's still there. And when you do do it, it's even better and more profound mm-hmm. than, than when you were, you know, a 20 something and just banging it out and hoping that everybody was happy at the end, you know? Um, or suppressing your sexuality so that the guy didn't think you were weird. Right. You or, know? or suppressing it because you don't want to be called a whore yeah. or because you, you know, like you don't even want to be looked at like the kind of girl who likes sex yeah. because we're allowed to be sexy, but please, you Not cannot like, be sexual. No, that's right. That's that, that, And that's that disconnect between sexy let's all be sexy and look sexy and talk sexy and but not actually be sexual like you said and because then you're a slut um yes and it's it's just so disconnected and just weird random Mm -hmm. crazy um but yeah fully owning our sexuality is amazing yeah you know and i really would love to see I would love to live in a world where sexy didn't have a type. Like, yeah. what the, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you you have to be like this. Like, your breasts have to be fucking massaging your fucking chin. You yeah. know, because they have to be pushed way up there, which is not natural. And your waist yeah. has to be this small. And your ass has to be this wide. And your legs have to be this long. Like, you know, there are all these things. And, and if you don't look like that, then yeah. you're not sexy. And that's not fucking true. No, no, it's not. It's absolutely not. And and sexy doesn't stop when you turn 30 or 40 Ex- or 50. I've never felt sexier in my life. I don't yeah. remember. I know I didn't inhabit this body like this. No. You know, so I couldn't have felt sexy even, even when I was dressing up to pretend to be because it yep. was an act. It was an yep. act. Even yeah. someone asked me, like, do you wear lingerie? I'm like, for what? Yeah. I mean, and again, if you like lingerie, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with lingerie, but I came with the sexiest outfit that I've ever <laughs> fucking worn. Like, I'm wearing it right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's it. It's, and it's, again, we've got it drummed into us. That it's got to be putting certain things on and looking a certain way. Mm-hmm. To be sexy. That's mm-hmm. what sexy is. And it's not sexy is a mindset. Absolutely. And if we could tap into that sexy mindset 
more, then we'd be walking around feeling sexy and delicious and open and just and just vibrating at that level. And then why wouldn't people be coming on to us like moths to a flame? Because, you know, we're just, yes. you know, luminous, absolutely luminous. Mm-hmm. It's so Did nice. You? Like I, yeah. I wouldn't go backwards. For, I wouldn't be younger. Like <laughs> we're not no. younger. I no. really love, I'm really enjoying aging so much. Um, yeah. But I think that part of it is the the recognition and the permission slip. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the permission yeah. to be all of me without, yeah. you know, the filters and without the self-consciousness. You know, like, I can't tell you how many, how many buzz, how, how, I've killed my, my, my sexual buzz so many times yeah. by being worried about what is he thinking about my body. Yeah. Yeah. What is he thinking about my ass? Oh my God, is he seeing these stretch marks? Like, you know what I mean? Like just fucking ruining the mood for myself. And now, you know, I was fat with my clothes on. Yeah. Yeah. This is it. Like, (laughs) this is it. Exactly. You know, and uh, my husband, love that man so much, loves my stretch marks. He absolutely loves my stretch marks. I can't tell you because he was, he was stroking my ass the other day. And I said, are you playing with my stretch marks? And he goes, yeah, I love them. They're really sexy. I love your husband. I know. I know. He's such a cool guy. He's the most life-affirming, body-loving person. Yeah. That is so beautiful. And every woman deserves a partner that reveres her. It's so reading the Magdalene manuscript when they talk about when um, Mary Magdalene talks about the man must adore and be devoted to his wife. I was mm-hmm. like, that's Rob, that's my husband. Mm-hmm. He abs- that is him, that's how he treats me mm-hmm. all the time and has done for the longest time. It's just like, you must adore your beloved, and he tells me that all the time that he adores me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's beautiful. It's so, so, and I wish it for every woman. I really do. Um, well, and I think that it also speaks to, um, cause there are probably a lot of, you know, and, and I use the term men loosely just because we're talking heterosexual um, here, but I think there are a lot of people that do feel those things for their partners, but they do, they feel so uncon- uncomfortable with the vulnerability of sharing adoration. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, because they're not they're supposed they're pussy whipped or mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you know if they allow themselves to just say my wife my partner is awesome I love mm-hmm. her mm-hmm. Um, they they it's seen as weak. Yes. And we know that vulnerability is the strongest oh my goodness yes thing, place that you can be in to be that open and and stand there and be exposed and and feel vulnerable is powerful it's incredibly powerful and incredibly sexy mhm cuz there's nothing like i can be physically naked all day yep. like right now like <laughs> a naked girl right like I can be physically naked but it I which it doesn't bother me uh, yeah. even a little bit to be physically naked yeah emotional nakedness though oh is, that's it's still it still makes me quake in yeah. my metaphorical boots like <laughs> so one of uh one of my husband's and uh, my rituals is having a bath together we've got a two-person bath um and so we have a bath together most nights. And not only are we physically naked, but we spend a lot of time emotionally naked in that mm-hmm. bath. Mm-hmm. And I think that has been one of the most powerful parts of our relationship is mm-hmm. this, the time that we spend in that bath talking about our hopes and wishes and dreams, our, mm-hmm. uh, you know, our life together, where we want to go, what we want to do. It's just yeah. It's been a huge part of our growth together as as having a bath together every night. Mm-hmm. It's not every every night, but um, more often than not, 
Yeah. It's so fitting, like, because water is so cleansing. Yeah. And clarifying. Like, you know what I mean? Like, of course, look, of course, there's another, of course. Like, it seems like the most um, fitting place to be. Look, and here's another one, transparent. (laughs) Yeah. And open. You're just so open. Yes. You know, um, it's so beautiful. So well, beautiful. and and I and I'm not lost to the fact that you are you you're sitting, yep, in a container of you're you're sitting in the feminine, yep, being held by the masculine. Oh my goodness! Yep. Look, it's all the. <laughs> it's delicious. It's absolutely delicious. And if you know, if anybody is thinking of redoing their bathroom, get a double, you know, a two person spa bath. Get it in there. Use it every night Mm -hmm. or at least three or four nights a week. Do that. Beautiful. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, has so much, yeah, depth to it. Um, and you, you know, just getting into the bath and being that close to each other Mm -hmm. and open delicious. Yeah. Well, I feel like, look, and, and I'm just going to, um, drop it out there in case you guys consider it in the future. But I would love to see you and your husband do a webinar about just about being in a long-term marriage and being able to still keep that kind of connection and that the depth of that intimacy and still having amazing sex after being together for over two decades. Like that is amazing. I know. Quarter of a century. It's like that's a fucking amazing. And yeah. and be, and the reason I think that it's important, you know, maybe he won't feel comfortable on video, but maybe like an audio or something. Yeah. <laughs> but but I think that it's important because, you know, it's a lot of people really do think that, you know, by the time you've been with someone over a decade, then the, after that, your your marriage or your relationship is the graveyard. No, no, it's and, and this is the thing. It has got better and juicier and more delicious the longer that we've been together. And one of the other things that we do quite often is we look back mm-hmm. at what it, what it was like before and we reminisce about, you know, our hot bodies that we had then that we don't have now. Mm-hmm. And that keeps that, that sexual fire just tingling away, you know, because you look back and you kind of, wow, remember when we did this? Uh, or remember when you said that type of thing. It, it keeps that that youthfulness present mm-hmm. um, and brings it into the into the now as well. Yeah, it's and also we look at how far we've grown together. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we'll especially on our anniversaries and certain dates, we'll kind of go, oh, do you remember? Do you remember the first night that we spent together? Mm-hmm. You know and um, and that first night, just so everybody knows, I um, my baby was six weeks old. It wasn't his baby; it was somebody else's baby. Uh, it was not even was not even six weeks old. The first night that we spent together, and it was yeah, that was an incredibly intimate, amazing night. He had been with me through most of the pregnancy. The father of my sons, because it's the same father to all three of my sons, was no longer in the picture. He'd kind of impregnated me and and left the scene. All fine, happy that he did, because I had Rob come in Mm -hmm. when I was about four or five months pregnant, and he looked after me as a friend all through that pregnancy, and it wasn't until after the baby was born that our relationship actually started. Um... And, it, you know, you imagine being, having had a new a new baby that you haven't even had your six-week checkup and you're sleeping with a man that you've known for like five months but haven't actually been naked with up to mm-hmm. that point. That was, uh, that was the start of our relationship and how open and vulnerable I was at that time but how much he looked after me at that time as well was really powerful and has kind of set us up for this delicious relationship that we've got now. Well, and it speaks volumes to his capacity, you know, because there was no hangups around like, you know, you've got this baby for this other man. Like there was none of that. No. You know, so it really speaks to his capacity 
for love without any societal yeah. chains. But I think that it also is such an ode to you as a woman because you attracted the kind of man who could hold the fierceness of you. And like, you probably didn't even know like how fierce you were, you were yet. No, no, hell no. Uh, I, I kind of knew that I was the, being on my own. Uh, I'd been on my own for three years at that point, had the accidental pregnancy, which was all perfect. Um, and the fierceness and the strength that I felt, like, I can do this. I can do this on my own. I actually don't need a man. That's what I was standing in mm -hmm. when I attracted Rob, is I am fully capable of raising these three kids on my own. And I think that was, um, that was an incredibly powerful for me because I was uh, not quite 30. Mm. Um, and... Um, and had been downtrodden by my ex-husband. So getting to that point of, I can, I can do this. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this, but I can do this, was really um, a big journey in itself. And like you said, I, I know that I consciously called Rob in. Mm -hmm. A girlfriend and I sat down and, and we, this is when I'm, you know, big with baby, and we were talking about the kind of men that we were looking for. Mm -hmm. and she had this long list of things, and I said, all I want is a man who knows who he is, who's not interested in alcohol or drugs or tattoos, and is family comes first. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I got. That is exactly what I got within about three weeks. Wow. i been saying that with her. Yeah, it was quite amazing. Um, so it was a... There is power in being clear on who you want and why you want it. Yes. Um, so, yeah. I, I mean, and the universe is taking orders. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like waiting for you, but you have to be able to sit down and say, like, what you want off the menu. The menu is endless. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's whatever you want. Like, there's no judgment. If you if you said, you know, I want a man who can beat the shit out of me, look, and I, I hope no one is asking for that. But if you did, the universe would deliver that too. It's whatever you want. Just like that. Just like that. Whatever it is. And I, I just think um, some women get too specific. Yes. You know, I want a six foot blonde, blue eyed man with a six figure income and who drives a... I don't even know what the flashiest car is. It drives this kind of car and he lives in this space and he, you know, and, and then he has these qualities and it's like, yeah, but what are you doing to hold space? Right. For that? What are you doing? Like, and who do you are have you, to be to accommodate that? And who do you have to be to accommodate a man who's got, who's earning a six figure income and driving that kind of car? Are you the kind of woman? Yep. That would, you know, that would match that. Yes. And it, and it doesn't allow for the, the fact that you both actually grow into, some, into somebody else. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. Allowing the other person, this is what my husband says all the time, you have to love people enough that they can be and show up who they really are. Mm -hmm. You cannot suppress them or, or you know, um, expect them to be somebody else. You have to love them for who they are. Yeah. And I think that that's the thing that even though, you know, it's cliche, unconditional love, we have no concept of what that really means no. because there are all kinds of conditions. I love you as long as you love me back. That's for, uh, probably a biggie. As yeah. long as you love me, I'll love you. Yeah. You know, and as long as you do X, Y, Z. Yeah. As long as you don't do, you know, A, B, C, like, <laughs> you know, like there's. So many things, so many conditions. And, and we don't just put those conditions on our romantic loves. We put those conditions on our friendships. We put those conditions on our children. You know, we yeah. put those conditions on our parents. Like there's so many ways that like, what's the Rumi quote? Like we, it's not about like finding love. It's about, you know, getting on our thing. Yeah. Exactly. Like that's really our true work. 
Yeah. And, and, you know, dismantling all of the obstacles that we build around having what we want. Like if you don't, and, and, you know, I say, I remind myself regularly, but if you don't have, if the things that you want, if what you desire is not showing up, it is not because it's not for you. It means that you're not in alignment with what you're saying that you want, yeah. you know? I struggle with that word alignment because it gets used so much mm-hmm. and people don't really understand, but it means that you, um, you're not open. See, I keep, keep coming back to opening. You're not open in the places that you think you're open. Yeah, yeah. You're not open to receiving that. You've kind of got some, like you were saying about barriers, you've got mm-hmm. some doorways that you have not only locked but bolted at, you know. Yes, successful. yep. And then you're going, well, why isn't it showing up? Well, have you opened the fucking door? Right. And coming from myself, who I'm confident I'm a locksmith. Yeah. Because I've had some. (laughs) Had to be a locksmith in a former life because I am so good at locking the fuck out of some doors. Yeah. Um, You know, but then and then once they open, once you've opened them, you still have to be with the discomfort because it's a jolt to your system to yep. get what you want when you're so used to not having it. Yeah. Well, how many times do you say, I can't believe right. you know, something really good's happened. Oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Yep. And then what happens? It poof, it disappears. Yep. Or it's unbelievable. And that's what's like, no, like Maru Iabicellis always says, she's like, of course. Yes, of course. Like, yes, that's happening to you. Yeah. You know, and then being able to be comfortable tooting your own horn, you yeah. know, something great is showing up in your life. You know why? Because you're fucking amazing. You know, yes, yes, yes it's showing of up. Course, of course, yeah. Yes, exactly. you're amazing. It's so funny. Two of two different girlfriends of mine um, have me listed in their in their um, contacts in their phone as Stacy Amazing. One of my friends, we've been friends for 20 years, and she said, "You know, my daughter said, don't you think it's strange that you don't know Stacy's last name?" And she says, "I do. Her name is Stacy Amazing." Like. <laughs> And I love how that actually sounds like stay amazing. Right? Amazing. Yeah. But it's amazing. like, to, to, I had a conversation, um, gosh, probably last year with someone about um, this guy had a, a, a young daughter and I was talking about affirming her. You know, I think she was like two, affirming her. And he was like, well, I don't want her to be conceited. Yeah. And I was like, it's not conceit if it's fucking true. If you tell her she's amazing and she's a fucking amazing, she's amazing. Like, (laughs) what are you talking about? Like, you want her to pretend she's not fucking amazing and that makes sense to you. You know, like, don't worry about how other people are going to perceive it. If someone is uncomfortable with the fact that you're amazing, that has nothing to do with you. Yeah. You know, like, fuck modesty. You don't have to pretend you're not fucking amazing. That's dumb. You're fucking amazing. And if someone can't handle your amazingness, then they yeah. need to get the fuck out the way. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Don't come in here if you can't handle the energy of a fucking amazing because that's me. <laughs> fucking amazing. I love it. You know, like we have to stop playing yeah. ourselves small and yeah. not embracing like our genius. Like, I can, how can you look in the stars, look up at the sky and see the stars twinkling and knowing that you came from that and then pretend you're not fucking amazing? <laughs> I look at the okay. stars and sometimes it's like, oh my God, I can't believe I made that. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm not separate from that. You yeah. know, or looking at the ocean or a river or a mountain and if it takes your breath away... Why yeah. aren't you losing your fucking breath when you look in the mirror at your amazing self? Yeah. You know, like we have to, but again, like we have claim to, yeah. we have to claim it and we have to affirm it in ourselves because until we can truly affirm it in ourselves, we cannot affirm it in anyone else. No, absolutely not. No, we can't. And, you know, and the fact that you can see it, you know, like I look at you and you're fucking amazing. That means that I know that I'm fucking amazing. Yes. It doesn't I, detract from my amazingness at that all. I'm an amazing woman in front of me. And I feel like I, I felt like that from the moment we first talked. Like oh, it's yeah. always been this. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't matter how much time passes. No. You know, when I see you in my inbox, I'm like, oh my God, look at her doing her <laughs> damn thing. That excites me. Like I'm like, yeah. when I see 
my sister friend's doing well. My pussy fucking gets uh, excited. Then yeah. I'm like, I felt that shit. I'm like, oh my God, this great thing is happening. I'm like, you know how I know it's great? Because I just felt the contraction in my pussy right now. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yep. and it's not yeah. about like, oh, that's happening for you. That means what, you know, this is, no, yeah. if you are winning, I'm fucking winning. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely. Know? So yeah. I think well, that so- we, we have to be able to hold each other in high esteem as women Absolutely. So like Melissa, Melissa Drake. Yes. I saw her post about Gary V. Did you oh, see that post? I did. And I said to her, I'm so jealous because I've been following him for ages. And, and she goes, don't be jealous. The fact that you, that I'm, I'm doing it means that you can do it too. And it's like, oh yeah, I forgot. Right? Awesome. Yeah. Look, her win is your win. Yeah, absolutely. Her, and, and that's always true. I'm so proud of her. I was so, so proud of her for what she did. That was amazing. Yes. You know, but Melissa's not shy. I'll say that. Look, she's no. not shy. <laughs> no, but she did such a good job. I mean, what an awesome thing to do. Absolutely. And we all have the capacity for that. Yeah. And I think that there's nothing more empowering as a woman than watching another woman win. Oh, absolutely. You know, like, it, I mean, it. I just get giddy. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's happening so much more now. Yes. And we're, and we have the channels now to be able to see it up close and personal without having been there, you know, like it's it's now not limited just to the women that you see in your circle, you know, that live next door to you. Now our sisterhood is global for real now. Yeah. And we just have to keep leaning in. It's a beautiful thing. It really is. I just adore you. Okay, final question. Like now we're going to go into aftercare. <laughs> <laughs> now we have to clean up the mess. Right? What's what's your favorite way to be taken care of after sex? Uh, I just love the snuggling. The, you know, just rolling over, spooning and just drifting off to sleep mm. like that is just so delicious, you know. Um, I know some women um, worry about the mess Mm -hmm. and the cleanup, and it's like, no, this is us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is what we made, you know. Let's just lie here and just drift off together. It's beautiful. So you don't mind laying in the wet spot? No. Look, you are my shero because, you know, (laughs) I'm laying the towel down before. (laughs) No, no, it's just not, um, no. It, it's I'm all about the mess. I'm an earthy girl. I'm an earth sign. My my husband's an earth sign. Mm-hmm. We're very earthy people, mm-hmm. and you know that that mess. That's just us. Uh, sometimes I make him lie in the wet spot, but um, <laughs> you know I'm, all, you're so generous. You're so generous. Why would you want to hog <laughs> it all to yourself? <laughs> no, we spread that well, everywhere. Yeah, like we share everything. It's your turn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I adore you so much. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me. Uh, it's been lovely. It's been so. It's been too long to actually catch up. We have to do it more. I often. know. I know. Well, you've, all the amazing things. I, I didn't even realize it had been this long until today. I know. You know, because this year seems to be going at warp speed. I know. I yeah. know. It's crazy. But we'll catch up again soon. It'll be yeah. good. It, it won't be this long again. Well, I love yeah. you, sister. I love you too. I love you too. I love your beautiful face. So nice to see you. Absolutely. The Sensuality Project is produced, edited, and hosted by me. Music by bensound.com. The Sensuality Project podcast is a production of stacyherrera.com.